In this brief tutorial, I will show you how to install and use OpenFoam on Ubuntu and Windows 10 or above. The first step is actually to install PowerView in order to view the results of the simulations that OpenFoam produces. Click on this website and choose your operating system, in my case Windows, and download the first link. Note that you can download the MPI version, but that requires some extra prerequisites that are a bit harder to install. Click on the download so that it opens as soon as it's finished. And then once it's finished, it'll open up a prompt to go through the installation process. I've already gone through this process, so I will just cancel the download. Once you've finished this process, go back to here and look at the instructions on how to add PowerView.exe to Path. First, you need to locate where PowerView.exe is. Type in PowerView in the search bar, right click on it, click open file location, and then this is a shortcut, so we need to open the file location of this again. And here we have our .exe file. Copy the path with Control C and continue with the next step, which is to edit the system environment variables. So we type in edit system environment variables, click environment variables. We look in the bottom box here for system variables. We scroll down till we see path. We select it and click edit. We click new. We paste in the path we copied earlier with control V and then we click okay. I've already added this path, so I will just delete it. Okay, okay, okay. And there we go. Now, because of this step, we can now run powerview.exe from the command line. The next step is to install Ubuntu if you're running on Windows 10. Click on this website and install WSL1. Importantly, we're using WSL1 for reasons outlined over here. First, you want to open PowerShell as administrator. Type in PowerShell, either click Run as administrator or right click and click Run as administrator. Click yes, and then paste in the command and press enter. I've already run this command, so I won't press enter here. Once that command is run, close the prompt and restart your computer. Next, move on to step six, which is to install the Linux distribution. We go to the Microsoft store, and we type in Ubuntu into the search bar. Press enter, click on the first result, and click install or get. I've already downloaded it, so it has open here for me instead. Now that you've installed Ubuntu, run it by typing in Ubuntu into the search bar at the bottom and clicking on the first result. This will lead you to a prompt which will ask for your username and password. This will just be a first time setup for Ubuntu and every other time you run it, you won't get that prompt. I've already done it, so I only just get this blank command line. Now paste this instruction into the command line. Remember that to paste into Ubuntu, you need to right click instead of typing control V because control V types this strange character here. Press enter and type in the password you just set up. Wait for the command to run. Now that command is finished, go back to the wiki page, copy paste this command into your prompt and press enter. I've already installed OpenFoam, so I won't press enter here. Once you've done that and the command is finished, you want to edit your tilde slash dot bash RC file. The easiest way to do that is by going into your Ubuntu prompt, typing in explorer.exe and then dot to open up the current location with Explorer. Now that that's open, you can find your dot bash RC file over here. Click on it, right click, then click open with, and then it'll ordinarily give you this pop up. Choose Notepad, or I've already installed Visual Studio Code, so, but I'll just open it with Notepad. Now scroll down all the way to the bottom and make sure that you've got a line that looks something like this. Ignore these lines, these are just my own custom code. Ensure that you've got a line that looks like this and it has the version of OpenFoam you just installed, which should be 2112. This is my current version. If it isn't there, then paste it in and save the changes and close. Once you've done that, restart your Ubuntu prompt 
and then continue with the next step to verify that your installation process ran correctly. Make sure you're in the home directory. Again, pasting is a bit dodgy here. And then make a tutorial directory so that you can store all of your uh, open foam simulations. If the pasting will work. <laughs> then copy all the tutorials that we'll be using into that directory you just made. Now change directories into one of the tutorial cases so that we can run it. Run block mesh to generate the background mesh for the simulation. And then run icofoam to actually calculate. Once that's done, you need to make a file with a .foam extension. It doesn't matter what the contents of that file are or what the actual name of the file is, so long as it's got .foam on the end. You can do this by typing touch and then any name .foam, for example, banana.foam. And since you've run this step, if you're running on Windows, you can type paraview.exe and then that .foam file. If you're instead running this natively on Ubuntu, you would have just paraview and then your file name. But I'm running on Windows, so I've got the .exe version. Press enter and wait for the prop to load up. Then once you see this, just click apply and then you'll see this rather uninspiring box. Click over here into the U field. Note that this dot means it's a smooth version. If we instead had the Q version, we would see each individual cell and its value. But this looks a bit nicer because it's smooth. Now the point of this flow is that the top face here is moving to the right at one meter per second. And we can see the direction of the flow by clicking the glyph button, clicking arrow or making sure that arrow is selected, orientation array U with the dot next to it, and then no scale array and reset to make sure it's the correct scale factor. Click apply, and then you'll see indeed the top wall is moving to the right. And we can see the circular pattern that's set up. This is the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.